previous lesson, we looked at the different options for viewing data in Power BI. In this lesson, we'll start building visualizations. Creating a visualization in Power BI is very straightforward. We'll create a chart showing the total value generated by fee earner. This will let us see which fee earners are generating the most revenue for the company. If we navigate to the transaction data table, we can see that it contains both fee earner and value fields. We'll drag the value field onto the canvas to create a column chart. We'll also add the fee earner field so that the chart now shows the value by fee earner. To move it around the canvas, we simply click any part of the chart area and drag it to our desired location. We can also resize the chart by clicking and dragging any of the side or corner handles. Let's learn how to sort the data in our chart. We can do this by selecting the three dots in the top right corner. The chart is currently sorted by value. However, we'll choose to sort by fee earner instead. Now the columns are sorted by the name of the fee earner from Z to A. If we sort ascending, the order changes from A to Z. Let's choose to sort by value descending again, as this orientation is better for our analysis. Note that Power BI determines an appropriate visual based on the data we supply. In this case, the first field we placed on the canvas was the numeric value field. As such, Power BI decided to draw a column chart. If we want to change this to a different kind of visual, we need to use the visualization pane on the right. We could change the format of this chart to a tree map, a funnel, or even a line chart. Of course, only certain options make sense for specific data sets or analyses. In later courses, we'll look at all these visualization options as well as when to use them. We'll change this to a clustered bar chart for now. Let's add another visual to our report. The managing partner would like to see which clients are the most valuable. We can determine this by plotting value by client. While we could create a new page for this chart, we'll put it on the current page for now. This will allow us to see the interactions between our two visuals in a later lesson. We'll start by dragging the value field onto a blank area of the canvas, creating a column chart. This time, we'll add the client field by simply clicking on the appropriate checkbox in the fields pane. It's clear that the column chart is not a good visualization here. There are so many companies that we need to scroll a fair amount to see them all. Let's try changing this to a tree map. This is a bit better. In this visual, each client is represented by a box, with the size of each box indicating the total value of fees generated by that client. To get information on the smaller clients, we can mouse over a specific box to bring up a tooltip with the client name and value. This chart is automatically sorted by size with the largest clients on the top left and the smallest on the bottom right. A chart like this is very useful when we want to quickly identify the largest clients without being particularly concerned about the numeric values. Looking at these two visuals, you might be wondering how Power BI knew we wanted the total value given that our data is at the transaction level. To answer this question, let's go back to our value by fee earner plot. If we look at the visualizations pane, we can see that the total value of each bar is derived from the value field in our transaction data. We'll click the down arrow next to the value field and see that Power BI is performing a sum calculation. This means that the bar for each fee earner represents a sum of value for all of their transactions. We'll change this to an average, and the bar chart now shows the average value for each fee earner. Clicking on the down arrow again, we can see that there are many other options, such as min, max, and count. We'll see more of these in a later course, but for now, We'll go back to sum. Now that we've created our first visualizations, we'll stop the lesson here. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at some different options for interacting with these visualizations.